So that's what we're going to do. Um, we'll talk about what you can use them for while our pages are drying. So we'll just get started. That way it gives us a few minutes to let the pages kind of dry before we start assembling. So basically, I'm going gonna... oh, to jump in for just two seconds before we get started. Um, a couple of things for all of you guys who are here. We are doing a giveaway again. So um, if you, I will write down everybody's name and pull one and I will email you afterwards about the prize. Um, like I said, we are recording this and I will send out the email, the email with the link afterwards. And yeah, and I think that was actually it. I just wanted to throw those two things in okay. there. And um, yes, so welcome. I didn't mean to interrupt you there, but welcome. Renee. No worries. It's a very simple process, yep. very carefree, non-technical, which is the way I like things, because that's how art should be. It should be fun and easy, not you know, overly thinking. So what you're basically going to do is we're going to create one of these books. So what we're going to need is a bunch of pages. And then you're going to want to do a couple of pages two-sided so that you can make a cover. And I know it doesn't make sense now, and it's going to be the most confusing part of today is making the cover. But you just want to make sure to paint two sheets at least on both sides. And um, you can do more than that. Sometimes I do so that I have a choice. And the only other thing I have to say is you want to paint, which is why we're using a brayer, is um, it makes it the paint thin so that it can dry faster. If you, you could actually paint on paper, but it's going to take a good you know couple hours to dry enough to assemble it into a book. So we're doing it this way to make it quick and easy, and you can make a bunch of them. So basically, you just want to choose some colors that you like. And you're going to think that your pages are going to be folded in half eventually. But I don't try to think about that. I just basically put some colors on that I like that are complementary to each other. Not too thick, like I said. Oh, and by the way, I didn't have this notebook here. This notebook is something that I put all of my grayer marks on, and then I decorate it later. So you can do that. It's a good way to start off with an unblank page because I find blank pages kind of annoying. Um, it's nice to have something to start with <laughs> and it lets you have a way to, uh, to start a page. So I always have a journal that I do that with. It just makes it, um, I don't know, it just stops you from having a blank page. You don't have to think you already have something there to start. Non-technical, like I said, I don't really, I go free throw, a free um, I just go. I don't, I try not to think too much. And then you're just going to brayer it until it's like the colors kind of blend into what you want. When you stop, when you feel it looks like a way that you like, like I said, I can clean it off on a blank sheet or on another page. You can use one of your other pages, which is a good way to get your second, your uh, cover pages, um, because you're already starting with with uh, with some paint on it. Make sure it's thin. Like I said, this one's a little thick, so I'm going to just take a little bit more off, and then I'm going to put it off to the side. I should have probably said you're going to need a table. So going to take a little space at first. Then you take your second one, and you just keep going, and you just keep mixing your colors. If you don't like it. Just keep adding to it until you do. And there's nothing wrong with white space. I actually like some white space. You don't have to decorate the whole thing. You can make it as simple or as complicated as you want. And then you just leave it to dry. It'll dry pretty fast if you do it thin. So the thicker you go, the longer it's going to take to dry. Um, and we just, I want to have you guys assemble the books today which is part of the position. And you see how this cover, this is already turning into a sheet, which later will become, I do a lot of art journaling, so this becomes an art journal. And I just lean towards colors that kind of make me feel happy or fit my mood of the moment. And I try to mix dark with light. And some of it is just the surprise of what's going to happen. You don't know what's going to happen, which is part of the joy of it, is when you're mixing colors and just kind of playing. You know, you're not thinking, you're just going. The less you think, the better off you're going to be. If you try to be perfect, you know, it's, it can 
put too much pressure on. You can see the pages turn out satisfying and stuff, which is okay. You know, and the, this is really only going to be your base layer anyway, so it doesn't have to be perfect because you're going to end up decorating it later or writing on it, whatever you choose to do with it. Everybody see, you can see, right? And we're going to go through this process. I'm just going to keep going. If you have any questions, let me know. But I'm going to keep going and hopefully we keep going. And then once we get as many pages as we get done, we'll let them dry. And then I'll show you kind of how we're going to, what we can use them for. And then we'll assemble the book. But just keep going with, um, just make it whatever you want it to be, the colors that you like. I find um, doing some pale colors with some bright colors. And you can always use white. Black is always um, interesting. I use a lot of black in some of my stuff too. It just can overwhelm the page um, in, in small pages like this. So I'm using mostly brighter colors. So on this one, um, I feel like this one's my cover. I already like this one. Uh, it's, so when you know you have your cover, go ahead and do the second side of it right away because that way, that's going to be the thickest and that will give it time to dry. So I do this. I just do pages and pages of this and then that way when I'm ready to actually do some art in them, they're already halfway done for me. So... On this one, this is, I know this is going to be my cover, one side of it, and the other side is going to be paid. It's okay if it bends. We're going to stick them together and they will end up um, becoming kind of stiffer with the, once we glue or tape them together. I'm not sure what you guys are using for paper. I think glue. So if you can get your double-sided pages done right away, that will be better because then you can be sure that they're dry. Just kind of go with it. Don't think too much. Just kind of let the colors draw you in. I kind of feel like whatever colors we're drawn to, art is what it's supposed to be. So whatever colors you're drawn to is what it's supposed to be. Um, you know, you have your technical side of like mixing colors that are complementary, of course, whatever feels like they go together, but other than that, it's just kind of by feeling. And see this one, I'm going to leave a little white because I actually like just a little bit of the white. And if you have a spare sheet and you're cleaning off your brayer, um, those actually end up being some of my favorite pages in my archives because, I don't know, they just, they do their own thing. I don't think about them and sometimes the things that we don't think about end up being, you know, what we end up like. So this one I feel like that those colors aren't working for me, but I will go ahead and add something brighter. I don't want it to be too thick. Something just to lighten it up a little bit. Make sure your paint is thin so that your pages can dry. I mean, you can, when you're doing this on your own, you don't necessarily have to be as careful. And this is okay. This is pairing. It's okay. Because I can end up just using it for one side. I usually do these on a plate and it doesn't stick as much. But when you're doing it on your own, you can go a little slower and let them dry. And you don't have to um, speed it up as much. I just want to make sure that you can assemble the book which is why we are doing it so thin. All right, let's do some purple. If I'm using a dark color, then I'll have to use, or I'll try to use a light color with it. Way too much paint, but we will spread them. And maybe some pink. Let's 
a little thin. So I am going to fix my problem by just taking some off and spreading it to the other side. Just look at that. I'm liking it. Mistakes are good. I find mistakes are what's actually supposed to happen. Gonna let them all dry as long as we can. And hopefully they will dry enough. If not, we will make it work. And like I said, you guys I hear are having the video afterwards. So if you find that they're just too hard to work with, it's probably too thick, but that's okay because once you learn the technique, it's just very easy to do. Um let's see. Green. I'm feeling pink lately. It's like a self love color, and sometimes it just kind of makes you feel soft, I guess. Can you choose the colors just to kind of draw you in? A little dark, and this one's not working. I see it's tend to lean towards the same colors. I wonder if everybody else is like. happens but it's okay we're gonna glue them together so seriously if you have even if it's hairs we will find a way around it i just take some washi tape or tape and it just adds to kind of the grungy effect of it Yeah, I'm I might leave this one in for me because that's going to be too sticky, which is fine. I can take some pages. <clears throat> All of these are pages that I've done backgrounds on. This is from a stencil. It's just helpful. I have a lot of pages started. So under, I like to do collage, and that's one of the options that you can do with these. I'm going to kind of leave simple. And what's nice about the brayer is it carries the, tape, the colors from the previous pages, so it kind of gives it a grungy feel. And textured without actually having texture. So it looks like you put a lot more work into it than you actually do. It's a benefit. I'm not sure where we are on time. Are we doing okay on time? Yep. Just want to give the pages time to dry, and then uh, and then I'll talk a little bit more about how we assemble it. Some colors. Oh, I thought there was a sheet there. Yeah, it all starts to look the same. So what the brayer is really doing is it's spreading color, of course, but it also keeps the paint thin. 
Because we can do painted pages, which you can do absolutely on another journal, then you don't have the time constraint of trying to assemble it in an hour. You can um, you can you can do the paint a little thicker, you can paint it this or that. Very untechnical, just fun. Running out of room, I'm sure everybody else is too. We'll start. I think you can do as many pages as you want with this. This one was made with seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve. And this one I did the other day here as a trial run. I think I just did ten. I was trying to see if I could pull this off. So when you get to where you feel you're ready, and just remember, they don't have to be perfect. These are just the backgrounds. This is, you know, we're going to put stuff on it. We won't, but you will. <laughs> and um, so this is really just to create a base, you know? So let's just make sure, just a reminder, the cover, we need two covers that are double-sided. Because... Um, well, you'll see, once we glue them together, this is, there's a quick way of doing this, which is how we're gonna be able to make it book. It's, um, it's the cheater binder method instead of actually binding the book. I like the map, that might be my new cover. And that's okay too. It doesn't have to be completely um, done because once you fold it, one side's gonna get glued anyway. So don't fall in love with, with any one side because you might have to give up one side of it. This can be a problem when you really like them all. But art has to take a sacrifice somewhere. So if you have any pages that are ready, like this one's pretty dry. It doesn't have to be completely dry. It's not, it's not gonna be perfect today because we don't have but you're going to fold them and then kind of like once you fold it, you're going to fold your decorated side inside. So this is, you're going to imagine this is your pages. This side doesn't matter. So you're going to fold them inside the side that you want showing and then leave your cover front and back separate and on a different spot. You're just going to fold them all in half. And then when you get to your covers, I'll show you when I get to my cover. Most of these are pretty dry already. And that's my favorite, actually. So I'm going to go ahead and make that a bat. And I'm just going to do this one simply. I'm just going to do some bold and some blue. And even though it's wet, I'm going to go ahead and fold it anyway. This one, you don't, for the cover, don't worry about which is your front and back yet, which way you fold it. Just, you know, fold it when, when, however you think. It's going to be, let's say the pages that you like best on the inside. And here's another double sided switch. The possible double sided as I want it to be. There's another inside. Okay. 
This one got torn a little bit. It's okay. We're just gonna definitely make that the outside. We'll use this as a spare. If I don't need it, I won't use it, but it's okay if you do, because like I said, you're doubling up, so it's going to strengthen anyway. It will be strong enough. But if you did get any tears or paper pulling off, it's okay. You can always collage on it. You can do all kinds of things with it, which I will show you in a minute. Right now, I'm just going to get the foot. But this one's a little wet with that line. So I'm just going to. I don't really think about even what's on the brayer because I feel like with so much color, it doesn't really matter that much. And this is your first one. You can always make these very easily on your own. So if you don't like the way it turns out, there can always be another. Easy enough. And you can make these out of anything. You're using probably cardstock, but you can use anything. Honestly, I make things out of paper bags sometimes. During quarantine, I made things out of junk now. And there's always things to make things out of. So doesn't have to be technical. So here's another double sided. So I'm going to put this over here, all my double sided. So let's put them, the choose your covers or your double sided papers and put them on the side. You don't want to use them before their time. And what you're going to do, I'm going to use glue since I think that's what you guys are using. Usually, honestly, I use double sided tape, which I don't even know if I brought. Let me show you. Yeah, there's one. So double-sided tape is really handy for this. You can, and it's all the same way. Tape, glue, that doesn't matter. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start assembling the book. You're not going to do the covers. We're gonna save the covers for last because it does require a little bit of thought. So you just kind of stack your pages of how you want them. And you're gonna make sure, this is the most important part, make sure all of your seams are facing the same way. So I suggest just stacking them and you could do it towards colors, but you don't have to even think about it too much. The only thing I would suggest is if you have two similars, I would separate them by as much as you can, just to make it a little bit more interesting on the eye. So those kind of both fit together. But just put a little bit more blue. I think they just a lot of You're just going to keep all of your folded edges together. This is the most important part. because It's going to create the spine of your book. So you take your pages, just keep stacking them up. And you're basically going to create your book. And I don't know, I did as many pages. You can do these as thick or as thin as you want. Basically, you just need to be able to get the tape around it. I'm not sure how many you guys can get up doing. It doesn't matter, honestly. Just, I'm doing as many pages as I did. I'm probably working a little faster. And that's okay. So this one is the torn one. I'm gonna leave that aside. What happened to my other? So this is where we're talking about. That's going to be my cover. Where did my other cover go? I think I included it. This is where you have to be careful. Okay, there it is. So you just want to make sure, and now I'm thinking I want this as my cover more than the pages. So that's, and I think it's going to go like this. I'm sure. Look it. So then make sure all your pages are facing the same way. And you'll see all the whites in there. That's what they're going to do. So just make sure all of your folded sides are the same. And then now here we're going to go and assemble it. So you're going to take it and work with your folded side on the same side, or it might get confusing. This is the only place where I feel like things get a little confusing and you've got to keep a little thought. Is you're going to run your tape along your folded edge or your glue 
along your folded edges. Okay? I mean, along all the edges, I'm sorry, I'm being confusing. Along the very edges, because you want your papers to stick together. So you just want it along it. So you don't want it to be too wet because your paint's already a little wet. So I'm going to do tape just to show you how that works. That's impossible. Make sure you take your folded side and it matches the other folded side. And then you're going to put it on top of it. And line it up, smooth it out. And then you're going to have already your first paper. Pretty, right? So now we do blue because I think that's what you guys have and I don't want to be confused. I just wanted to show you paper as hot. And you just go along the edges because that's where the paper is adhering. We don't want to get it too wet. So just go along the edges and a little in the middle just to kind of give it some place to ground it. Make sure your folded pages are, I keep my seam or the spine at the top so that I know that that's always where my fold's gonna go. So wherever you do, just make sure to keep doing it in the same position. That way you don't end up getting confused. And it's fine if you do, you're just gonna have one less page, it's not a huge deal. And you're gonna keep going like this. Along the edges is the most important. That's gonna make the, the pages feel like they're one. So in the interest of time, oh, we do? Okay, I started to like, oh, this stuff goes much faster than I thought. <laughs> so I'm gonna. Do you see how that's working? I love that paper, it's very um, It automatically, it's already becoming a book. I'm in love with this blue. It's not found everywhere, but I do a lot of collage work and a lot of books. So what kind of glue is it? It's called art glitter glue. And <laughs> when Brian COVID, I, I couldn't get it. And I was going to I don't even know where it's made. It is US. But it's called art glitter glue, but it's not glitter. And it's not, it's just that I don't know why they need that, but it's magical. It's, it's thin. It comes out fast, you never clogs. You have to keep a pin in it though, um, or it dries up really fast. But it's just, it dries fast. It, it's, I do a lot of collage work. It makes things not lumpy. I love it. It's, I love this. It's so amazing. And this I actually looks, I love these for doing, um, except sometimes they don't work, but these make it really easy. Yeah, I know my glue. <laughs> when you start doing collage, this is the first thing that you you learn about what works. And this pour, because I have them stacked too quickly, it doesn't matter. If it matters to you, don't put it in. It doesn't matter to me. Some of my favorite things have tears. It's, this, is, this is just a little spot. You always cover it up. And like I said, we're going a little faster, and my spot is getting a little dirty. Um, we're going a little faster. So things are going to happen. If you let the pages dry flat, this isn't going to happen. But I'm just rolling with it in the interest of And you can also use blue stick, of course. Just make sure you go along the edges. This is the most important. Because you don't want your pages to kind of be flipping up. If you line them up, if you don't glue the edges, they can flip up. You'll see these are nice and they feel like one page. We're going to complete this and then I'll show you what we can do with them. And I do a lot of journals. I find, you know, when I don't feel like doing my regular art journals, just give me a place to go to put out my thoughts work with my hands. I find journaling is very good for it's not even, you don't even have to write them in the you, can, you can express them in color and just plain. It's, it's uh, a very nice stress relief. I call it my daily meditation.
Try not to go too thick because it might be a little bit of the paint still. If you have any questions, you want me to know. Feel weird not hearing everyone. <laughs> <laughs> I never have that. Part of art is the sharing, right? It's the interaction. So like I said, the most important part is just keeping your hold itself together. Now we're to the last one. So now I'm going to choose. So this is my front cover. Okay, and here you can see I didn't line up right there. So then that's fine. Not a big deal. So everything is fixable. Didn't line up perfectly. Let's just trim off the excess. And I'm glad this is happening because it lets you know what to do if it's happening. It really, it's not, um, it's, everything's flexible. Just trim off the, the edges, no big deal. And I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit more medium. So I'm kind of glad that happens. Um, keep going. Like I said, the wet spots will stick together sometimes. When you're doing this on your own, it won't, and it Ideally, you can air dry it a little bit. You see, they're so easy to make, right? All right, so I kind of feel like I want this to be my pages and not my cover. But, which side? I definitely want this as my back cover. I'm not loving the back, but it doesn't matter because it's back and I always cover it up. And you can always paint on it later, too. Hmm. Sounds weird to cover up a favorite page, but to have that as a compliment, yeah, I'm just going to go here as a compliment. You can always add to it later. That's I'm telling you the most important thing is the coverage to side and to have all your seams together. Now you can see your book can stay together like this and it works, but to give it, you know, to get rid of the whites, you can do this in several ways. I'll actually give you a couple of options now. Um, you can take washi tape and wrap it around. You can use washi tape to decorate it. I am a duct tape person. I think the bright duct tape or but even the silver, all of it's good. You can use a piece of your duct tape. And if you want to, you can cut it in half. You don't have to. If your book is thin, you can cut it in half. If it's thicker, you can just um, the whole piece. If you want to go super thick, I have done one of these where it's really thick. You can do um, multiple, multiple pieces of the tape. I find it easiest to do this. Lay your tape down rather than trying to put it on and getting it all tangled. You see my messy fingers got in there. It doesn't matter. Just try not to gloss it over. You can do 
about, you know, it's never going to go back apart. And then you just try to center your book on. I'm going to stick it in there. And then you're going to fold it over. Flip it over and fold it over on the other side. And voila, you have a book. Trim off the edges. Most time you can see it here. I'm not saying it's not a struggle this part. <laughs> that takes never to leave me. Have you had any problem with quacking? With what? Quacking. Ah, uh, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> This is like having a journal for back. Yeah, right. It's not the easiest part, but just take your time and get it done. There you go. So that's that part. Okay, so I have more time than I thought. I was just trying to rush because I I couldn't let you guys let your paintings dry a little longer. <laughs> trying to make sure you see all of it. So this is basically what you do with the books. And then now, obviously, you can do whatever you want with it. You can put your name on it, you can put a picture on it. You can. I like these for, um, I use, I journal everything. I journal lists, the books I want to read, movies I want to watch. I journal feelings, I journal thoughts, I journal sayings that I like. I sometimes will make a themed book for these, like I have one that says choose joy. And I put in thoughts that just make me happy or memories that make me happy when something happens that I want to remember, I put it in the book. I also, I'll show you a couple other options. So here's, um, these are recent class samples. So this one doesn't have anything in it. That doesn't have anything in it. This is one where I just took, literally all I took is a stamp and I stamped words on it. This one's about, fashion, there's some about art. So I took a piece of scrap that tore and I glued it on here as a, like a little spot. I put one of these tags and literally I know it sounds like a lot of materials but you can make this, I made most of these out of file folders. Um, junk mail is your best friend. There's never an end of it. You could always paint over it with white paint and then decorate it however you want. I told you I made these out of like boxes from food. Um, you can make them out of anything. So the materials are easy to find. You could find these in magazines and then you put it on junk mail, cut it out, you have decorations. Um, stamping, I make my own a lot of the time from dollar store big erasers. And you cut them in half, be careful. It's not. Um, but it can be sharp, so just be careful with it. And then you do your own stamping with it. So you can do that in these. Uh, cut out quotes, pictures, whatever you want. Stamping, stencils work good. Sometimes before I glue them together, I will stencil on them and stamp on them. So if you look at, yeah, this one I did stencils, or no, this one is stamping, this one is stencil. And again, you can make those out of anything. Nothing is, I mean, art's all around you. You don't have to, you don't really need a lot of supplies. How this is a stencil. Uh, stencils, you can, I buy some, but you could also make them out of any kind of really cardboard, any stiff, like the uh, um, cereal box, anything. Some of these are bought, like this is letters that's bought. And I've, honestly, a lot of these come from my pages because this is what I do. I'll show you this one. This is like my, this is another thing that you can do. You can cut out images from magazines. I usually cover them with words. So like this one, too much perfection is a mistake. Um, these are all just from magazines and it's just me from brayering off on them. Some favorite quotes. This is just my book. I kind of just put a bunch of stuff in. So this has music notes, washi tape. This is from a magazine. 
and then I kind of paint over it to soften it. But you could totally do these in these smaller books. This is a sticker, it's stuck together. Like I said, I, like, I don't mind textures, that's okay for me. Um, a stamp in the mail. This is a stencil, but this is also a rub off page. So this is what you can do with them. You just kind of put it as a place to put things. So here is another sample. This is, um, this is an older art journal I did. I used to put like clothes. Life isn't about finding yourself, it's about dating yourself. You know, you just put jerky, you, whatever you want in here. This is stickers, you write, words found on things, books, old books that are, you know, gonna get thrown away, donated. You can cut out words from them and make like poems out of them. A sticker with magazines. All of this, this is tissue paper glued on just for texture. So these are, um, this is one of my earlier art tools. But it's just, you know, whatever you want it to be, but it makes, this is a nice background to do this kind of stuff on. Um, and this is what you could do with it. It's, they're, they're really fun to make. This is one of my favorite ones. This is a COVID one because I was feeling very stressed. So I just collaged on the word art, keeps me sane, and then drew on some pictures from the magazine. This would be great for this book. I mean, it's the perfect size to put in there. And this is one of some of the things that you can do with it. So stamping, gluing, words, really whatever you want it to be. It's just, this is a good sample of, I do this almost every morning. It's just a way of starting my day. It's like almost for me a meditation. It's sticky and that's okay too. This is coronavirus page. I was like, oof, what's going on here? It's a good way to get out feelings. But you can also use it for whatever you want. You can use it for, for channeling your thoughts. And you can also do this. This is another symbol. I actually made books, so I actually made this out of a gold book that somebody was throwing away, and I figured, you know what? I'll use it for a cover. And you could just glue things into it. And this is uh, almost all junk mail. This is old, um, a gel print that I did. This is all junk mail in magazine pages, book pages that from a book that was falling apart. You could also put this kind of stuff in there, just glue. Gluing is very satisfying. So you can completely cover up your pages also. And that's pretty much, I mean, you can use it for anything you want, or you could just write it. So, uh -huh. any questions? Sorry if I went too fast or I'm talking super, super fast. All right, I did have one question. Um, you said, what do we do with the cover? And I'm not quite sure. Um, okay, so when you get to the last one, you are just gonna glue your double-sided page onto the the first and the last to make sure you have a double-sided page and then you just gonna glue it just like you did the other ones you just want to leave your double-sided for the front and the back and that becomes your cover you could add another cover if you wanted to i like to use all the same things just to make it simple does that make sense yeah she said okay thank you okay oh wow. all right so i know did you have any directions that you were going to email I can, yes, I can definitely do that. Okay, so I will email out directions to everybody along with the recorded link to this. Um, I don't know if there's any other questions for Renee at all. Um, I was trying to go fast. I think I went too fast, but I was trying to make sure we got it all in. <laughs> I, I think it was good. Like our um, audio is a little off today, but you could very much see what you were doing. So that's okay. Perfect. And like I said, I do have a raffle here. I have everybody's name written down. Yay! And um, this week the prize is, let's see, it's a pencil case, a, a brand new set of like 16 or 24 Sharpies. Um, and so a, like a art journal type thing for inspiration. So today's winner is 
and I have whatever name is uh, like on your Zoom account, so I recognize it might not be you. Um, it might be your parent, but it's uh, Jillian Prisco. So congratulations. Um, and we will have, you can pick up your prize curbside. You just call when you get here and we will bring it out to you. I know this morning our phones weren't working, so if you can't get through, try again later, but I will get it all together and put your name on it for whenever you're able to pick it up during our curbside. And I'll email you also. Um, but thank you everybody for coming. Thank you, Renee. This was such a cool project. I can't wait to actually try it myself. Nice. Um, yeah. <laughs> And I hope to see everybody um, next week. We have Drawing with Lisa Adams next Wednesday at 10. And that will be our last session. And still have everything in your art kit for that session as well. And um, yeah, hopefully you will get a chance to make some more stuff. So thank you everyone for coming. And thank you, Renee. And thank you, Kathy, at the Art Association. for Thank well, you. Thanks. I hope you guys had fun and made work. Like Thank Sorry, you. it's not chatty, chatty. <laughs> no, it's 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 weird doing it this way. So it was fun. I, hope you guys liked it. I know I usually like to see everyone's faces and what they thought. So yeah, yeah. I know, but it was great, and everyone's yeah. going to get something out of it and can continue doing this. Uh, just make yeah. art. Just, yeah, just make art. It makes you feel good. And come see art. You know, the yes. South County Art Association is open Wednesday through Sunday, one to five, and we always have an exhibit usually and uh right now we have a clay exhibit all pottery and you'll be amazed to see what people make it's free and it's a nice cool thing to do on an afternoon <laughs> in the summer <laughs> it's a hot one <laughs> well thank you guys so much for coming and i will i'm gonna stop recording here and i will talk and see everybody later so thank enjoy you. the rest of your day everyone thanks bye bye, bye. Oh, bye.